Hi there everyone, here again with another Share Effective tutorial. Or rather this time we're going to show you how you can use some of the best practices and methods to upgrade to the new PlayStation 4 Pro. In this tutorial we'll show you how you can transfer your Capture Gallery and Share Factory projects to your new system. So first let's talk about the Capture Gallery and your Share and Broadcast settings. Your Share settings are going to go off of whatever you set your video link to be. So in 4.0 you will gain the ability to record one hour share button videos. While this is great for your creating very diverse content, this can accumulate over time when it comes to stuff like, oh I did something really cool in my video but or my game and then I just decided I want to save this last two minutes. Well you've saved your pretty much the last hour you've been playing the entire time. So if you just let this keep going and going, you're going to accumulate a lot of data you're not even really caring about. So what I'm going to show you is how to actually reduce some of these clips down to just to what you need. That way you're actually not transferring wasted data or using up spaces in your hard drive that you actually need for games and other things. So first let's talk about the capture gallery. Now what I have here is saved two clips, one one minute long and one one hour long. If we go into information, you can actually see the difference in data size. So a one minute clip is only 50 megabytes. I can also, just for your own sake, know this is actually where you could rename your clip if you so chose. So I could just say one minute, and this is how it will display when I go into Share Factory. So if this is something that you will need to actually tell the difference between your clips, this is a really handy trick. On top of that, now let's look at a one hour clip. A one hour clip can be almost three gigabytes so so you know so this can actually eat up a lot more time if you're going to transfer data or backup and restore later on as we're going to go over when you're transferring to another system if you're only needing the last two minutes of this video you want to get rid of a lot of this data so let's back up here hit options and trim now just so you know this is a unlike share factors trim which is something that reads these files and then just says, I want to look at this section, this section, but leave the clip that's source alone. That's how Share Factory works. When it comes to system trim, you're doing a destructive edit, meaning that the changes you make here will delete the rest of the clip and you will no longer be able to read it. So this will be a way to remove it from the hard drive so you can get space back. So let's say, oh, I don't know. Let's start here now. I can use R2 and L2 to actually save this beginning and end points, or I can select any of these cells and set them there. You also have the option to share this clip, this section as a screenshot, which you can also do in Share Factory, but this is just a quick way if you decide that you want to do it outside of the app. So you can also set your intervals to be one second or 60 seconds based on however long this clip is. Since this is a really long clip, I can make each one of these little cells one minute long versus one second. And it helps to actually get to the places you need to. So if I say one second, we'll expand this out. It'll load the actual cells to actually tell you what part, what frames of the video you're looking at. And so you can get a little bit more fine tune of the areas that you want to keep. So I say this much. Now I have a six second clip from one hour. I'll go ahead and say okay. Now I can choose to override it or save a new clip. So if there's a several different sections in this video that I want to keep, I can go ahead and create new clips out of this before I'm ready to get rid of the original. So we'll save as a new clip. It'll trim it out. So instead of a three gigabyte video, now we have something that's five megabytes. This is going to be a huge help if you're needing to transfer data. So now that you have your capture gallery trimmed down to something a little bit more manageable in size, we can go ahead and go into settings. You'll come down here to the system option and you'll find the two options we're going to be using for this tutorial for backup and restore or transfer data. First we'll go over backup and restore. So you'll select backup. It will need to sync your actual trophies and your save data just to make sure that you're properly up to date. So now you'll see that it automatically grabs your captures from the capture gallery, your save data and your settings. You have the option to keep your applications for your games and ca other applications like Share Factory to add to this or remove it to actually make the process a little quicker. So one thing to keep in mind before you decide to go with or without this, Share Factory projects are saved to the application itself, not separate game data that you could just remove and copy off and everything else. 
that's actually part of the app itself. So if Share Factory gets deleted, so does your projects. So as a just a general rule of thumb, I'm going to probably just keep this on here and then remove over whatever games I think I need to reinstall next time around. So you'll select next and it will create an image of your of your hard drive just like it would on Windows or Mac and it will allow it to back up to the hard drive. Now, if you have a, a particularly large hard drive that you want to back up, a USB little drive is not usually going to be big enough. So one of the tricks that I did was when I upgraded my hard drive to a two terabyte, I bought a little enclosure for my 500 that came in the console already and just used that as my backup hard drive. So this actually works out pretty well for this. So I would just like recommend this as an option if you're going to be making some kind of upgrade or anything along those lines, if you want to go to a two terabyte instead of a one terabyte or anything along those lines. You'll select backup and it'll go through the process of restoring it to the hard drive. So I've already gone through the process of backing up my PlayStation 4 to my USB hard drive. What you'll do now is connect your USB hard drive onto your new system and select Restore PlayStation 4. It'll read the actual hard drive for whatever images it can read as a PlayStation 4 hard drive image. So you'll select this and it will initialize the PlayStation that you are going to restore it to. So keep in mind this is not an additive restore. If you have anything on this PlayStation you're going to restore it onto, it's going to wipe all of that out and restore the previous image that you had from your previous system. So keep that in mind before you actually run along with this. The next option is transfer data from another PlayStation 4. This is an option that allows you to transfer data between two consoles without the use of an external hard drive. Just as long as these two consoles are on the same network, you'll be able to perform this option. So there are two ways you can do this. One with wired Ethernet connections, where you will actually connect an Ethernet both to the same router while they're both signed in. The other is if you're on the same Wi-Fi network and connect a direct line between both consoles with an Ethernet cord. You'll select transfer data on the target system. So if you're doing this for a PlayStation Pro, you'll do this on the PlayStation Pro to initialize the process while your PlayStation 4, your original PlayStation 4, with the data you want moved is still on the same network. You'll select transfer data, it'll do the same syncing process. You'll confirm that. And so now what will happen is the data on the original PlayStation will be left intact. The, play, the data on the PlayStation Pro that you're going to be transferring to will be initialized. So you don't have to worry about, oh, if I start this now, I'm going to lose all the data on my previous console. You'll only wipe out the new console's data. So keep that in mind when you're performing this process. That does it for this tutorial. If you have any questions about backup or store or transfer of data, feel free to check any of the links in the description or leave a comment below. Be sure to stay tuned, we'll have surprises coming soon. Thanks everyone.